Hello, my name is Joe Schmidt and today we'll be going over muscle anatomy. Your learning objectives for today are to identify muscles in their specific regions, the head and the neck, the thorax and shoulder, the abdominal wall and posterior trunk, muscles of the upper limbs, muscles of the pelvis, and muscles of the lower limbs. We'll also be giving some basic actions of those muscles. Muscles of the head and neck. Up top we have the frontalis and the occipitalis, which is basically one muscle with a tendon going across the top. We have the orbicularis oculi, which is a circular muscle going around the eye, and the orbicularis oris, which is a circular muscle going around the mouth. We have the zygomatic, zygomaticus major, the masseter, and the temporalis, which is over the temporal bone, and the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which starts at the mastoid process and extends down to the clavicle and manubrium of the sternum. Now some actions of those muscles. Here we have a picture of a man wrinkling his forehead. And it's actually the frontalis muscle that causes this action. The occipitalis on the back side would actually retract the scalp. The orbicularis oculi is what is known as the blinking mus muscle. And the orbicularis oris is what is known as the kissing muscle. The zygomaticus major is what is known as the smile muscle and pulls back the lips. The masseter is what is known as the chewing muscle. You might have heard the word mastication, which means to chew up your food. The temporalis muscle, if I can find my pointer here, helps to elevate and retract the mandible which is this bone here. And then the sternocleidomastoid helps to not only flex, but to rotate the head, which is what we see here in this picture. You see this figure rotating their head from left to right, which is called a unilateral motion, unilateral motion or movement, which means both left to left and right. So the sternocleidomastoid helps to not only flex, but to rotate the head from left to right. Muscles of the thorax and shoulder include the pectoralis major, seen here, the serratus anterior, which is serrated like a serrated knife, the deltoid, which is triangular in shape, and then the external intercostals and in, internal intercostals and then the diaphragm which these are starred because they are deep muscles they are not pictured here but if you can imagine the diaphragm would be a parachute shaped muscle on the inferior border of the thoracic cavity and the superior border of the abdominal cavity so it's a parachute shaped muscle that lies inferior to the thoracic cavity but superior to the abdominal cavity. Okay. Now some actions of those muscles. The pectoralis major flexes and adducts and medially rotates the arm. Remember adduct addux, adduction is to move towards the midline of the body. The serratus anterior protracts and holds the scapula against the chest wall. The deltoid abducts the arm, which is to move away from the midline, which is seen here in this picture. So the arm is moving away, abduction away from the midline. 
the external intercostals, elevate the ribs during inspiration, and the internal intercostals, depress the ribs during forced expiration. So if you can think of the handles on the outside of a bucket, the external intercostals would help to lift those handles on the outside of a bucket. When you breathe in, the internal intercostals would help to push those handles down whenever you breathe out. And forced expiration is whenever you're doing some sort of exercise. So this is not whenever you're just sitting here breathing in and out, but whenever you're doing some sort of exercise where you're breathing hard. And then the diaphragm helps to enlarge the thoracic cavity during inspiration. Now muscles of the abdominal wall and posterior trunk, those include the rectus abdominis. And remember that rectus means that it is parallel with the midline. So if you see these muscle fibers here and they're all running parallel with the midline and these are the rectus abdominal muscles. The external obliques seen here and here. And then on the posterior side, we have the trapezius muscle, seen here, and then the latissimus dorsi, which is a broad muscle, latissimus dorsi. Now some actions of those muscles. The rectus abdominis helps to flex the vertebral column, seen here, if it's moving forward to flex the vertebral column like whenever you're doing a sit-up. So it's the sit-up motion. The external obliques help to laterally flex the vertebral column or rotate the vertebral column. On the posterior side, the trapezius helps to extend the head, seen here in this picture and also to elevate and depress the scapula. The latissimus dorsi helps to extend and adapt and medially rotate the humerus, the arm. It's also known as the swimmer's muscle. So in the swimming motion, swimmers usually have a very broad chest and very, very broad shoulders known, latissimus dorsi is known as the swimmer's muscle. Muscles of the upper limbs include the triceps brachii, and this is a posterior view of the arm, triceps brachii. Remember that seps means head, and tri means that it has three heads. Okay, triceps brachii. And then on the anterior view, we have the biceps brachii. Again, seps means head and bi means two heads. So biceps brachii actually has two heads. So this is the biceps brachii seen here. Actions of these muscles, the triceps brachii helps to extend the forearm. The biceps brachii helps to flex the arm, forearm, and then to supinate the hand. So that means to turn the palm outward, like if you're holding a cup of soup. So supinate means to turn the palm outward, like if you were holding a cup of soup. The muscle doing this action is the biceps brachii. Muscles of the pelvis include the iliopsoas group, the psoas major seen, seen here, the psoas major seen here, and then the iliacus seen here with its border on the iliac crest. So the psoas major, seen here, and then the iliacus make up the iliopsoas group. 
Then the gluteus maximus, seen here on the posterior side. And then right above it would be the gluteus medius. So this is an anterior view and this is a posterior view. These are the muscles of the pelvis. So actions of these muscles include the iliopsoas group, which flex the hip and the thigh. So these muscles of the iliopsoas group help to flex the hip and the thigh. And then on the posterior view, the gluteus maximus helps to extend and then laterally rotate the thigh. So seen here in this picture, it helps to move the foot out and laterally rotate the thigh. Gluteus medius helps to abduct, so move the leg out, and then medially rotate the thigh, so moving the foot back in. So moving the foot back in, it's a medial rotation. So gluteus maximus helps to laterally rotate and extend the thigh, and then gluteus medius helps to medially rotate and abduct the thigh. Continuing on with the muscles of the thigh, we have the adductor group, which is this triangle right here. The sartorius muscle, which is also known as the sailor's muscle. Sartorius, which is this long one here, known as the sailor's muscle. And then the quadriceps femoris group, seen here. The main one you need to know is the rectus femoris of the quadriceps group. Okay, so these muscles are here include the quadriceps group. And the main one you need to know is the rectus femoris. Rectus femoris. So adductor group, sartorius, quadriceps group. And of the quadriceps group, this is the rectus femoris. On the posterior side of the thigh, we have the hamstrings, which is this group here. The main one you need to know is the biceps femoris, seen here. Biceps femoris. So on the posterior side of the thigh, we have the hamstrings group. The main one you need to know is the biceps femoris, seen here. Now let's talk about some actions of these muscles. The adductor group does exactly what you think it would. It adducts the thigh. And remember that adduction is to move towards the midline. And that's what we see here in this diagram. The leg and thigh is moving towards the midline. It's moving towards the midline. So this thigh is moving towards the midline. And this is adduction, ADD, adduction. The sartorius muscle, seen here, helps to flex the leg and thigh and rotates the thigh laterally to cross the leg. So it helps you to cross your leg. And then the quadriceps group helps you to extend your leg. On the posterior side, the hamstrings group helps you to extend and flex the thigh, or flex the leg. Okay, so it helps you to extend the thigh and flex the leg. Muscles of the lower leg include the gastrocnemius, gastrocnemius, which is your calf muscle, seen here. And gastrocnemius means big belly means big belly. The fibularis longus is on the outside here. Remember it goes along the fibula, the bone, the fibula, the outside bone. 
and then the tibialis, tibialis anterior runs along the anterior side of the tibia as seen here. We'll get a better view of the fibularis longus here in a minute. Okay, so gastrocnemus, which is your calf muscle, means big belly, the tibialis anterior, and then the fibularis longus would be this one right here. We'll get a better view. So this one right here would be the fibularis longus. It goes down the outside of the foot. The gastrocnemus, this muscle here, helps you to plantar flex the foot. That means push your foot down. The fibularis longus helps to also plantar flex, but also to evert the foot. The tibialis anterior, the one that goes down the anterior side of the tibia, helps you to dorsiflex, which is what this picture is doing here, lifting the foot up, but also to invert the foot. So the learning objectives we went over today were to identify the muscles of specific regions, such as the head and neck, the thorax and shoulder, the abdominal wall and posterior trunk, muscles of the upper limbs, the pelvis and the lower limbs, and then give basic actions of those muscles. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for your time and I hope you succeed in your studies.